Well, hey there, everybody. Welcome back. Uh, yeah, this mission is going to be something a bit more extravagant than what we've done before. We're going to be heading out all the way to another planet. In this case, we're going to Eve, which is the second innermost planet in the Kerbin system. And at the moment, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to fit more fuel tanks because obviously longer distance will need more fuel. Uh, but I'm using broadly the same basis for a ship as I did last time. Uh, with the central stack in the middle, and what I'm doing here is I'm trying to fuel link them up to the bottom tank and then now we're adding RCS, which is not just good for maneuvering, they're also highly fuel efficient if you want to use it for propulsion and then the comm system, which has got to be a lot further range this time because I have no communication satellites, I have to go all the way back to the Kerbal Space Center and, oh yes, of course, our probe is going to detect temperature around Eve, so I've put on the thermometers and some gravioli detectors just for, for looks. And of course batteries and solar panels because this is going to be a long duration journey. I think it's going to be over 200 Kerbal days. And what I'm doing now is setting up action groups for the solar panels so that I can just press 2 on the keyboard and it will open them all. And this is when I realise that those big tanks on the side, they're not going to fit into my fairing. But I also have another stroke of genius. This mission is using the improved Atlas Agena type rocket, as you can see above the black piece on the rocket. It's a long, thin stack, which it's actually going to take up out and into space. So I do that online. I've added another thin rocket underneath here. And I'm going to take that all the way to interplanetary space with me. And that means I don't need the side tanks on the rockets. So just checking staging and the separation rockets now before I put the fairing on properly. And let's go test this out. Oh, and I'm going to save the Agena module for later because that will come in handy when I'm doing the Gemini missions. So here we are on the launch pad. This is just going to be a quick test to make sure all my action groups work. And the rocket flies straight still because we don't know that putting the Agena on top of it would make it wobbly. But it seems to be going quite well, quite straight. And yeah, someone said in the comments that uh, these rockets are overpowered because they're using um, a, a different scale of NASA's calculations so that they're not exactly relevant to how the calculations of fuel and thrust are worked out for the stock parts because they're from the NASA pack. But, you know, I'm, ha I'm quite happy to use them. And it looks like overheating is going to be a big problem with this. So, although oddly enough, we're on full throttle and nothing was happening, so... Now we've got the Agena, uh, we'll go for a throttle up on that. So this one will actually be, uh, hopefully, not having to fire until we're in full or in out of the atmosphere. Um, but this is just, like I say, it's a test. And the fairings are staging fine when I pressed 3 in the action group. Um, and yeah, let's just... Uh, separate that, test the engine, and try out the action groups, because I've not used them so far in, in the series, and it would make it a lot more more efficient than having to click on all my solar panels. Okay, and also just checking the science systems. Um, because this is a sandbox game, um, it won't actually register science, but I'm doing it anyway. And oh, when I press 2 for the action group, it only fired one solar panel, so I'm going to go back into the assembly building and I'm going to change that. But meanwhile, something I've completely forgotten about, uh, the Kerbnik probe has been in orbit now for three years, which in real life it was only up there for a couple of weeks. So I'm going to bring it down now, and as you can see it's coming in at 44,000 meters, I think that's meters, um, and it's going to start to burn up in just a second. Yeah, I, I only want. Ooh, bang! <laughs> I only wanted to keep it up there for a couple of weeks in real life time, but obviously I've been making quite big jumps because I've not been throwing up all of the the rockets that failed and stuff like that. So yeah, it, it's got pushed to the wayside, and I forgot to deorbit it. But not to worry, I'll be leaving plenty of junk up there this mission because there's no way to bring the Agena module back down into to burn up. So that's just going to be floating around 
for a long, long time. And that happened even up to the Apollo missions. There's uh, secondary stages of the Apollo mission that when they burned to go into a moon or into a lunar orbit, uh, the the inter lunar stage just kept on going and I think one of them was detected as a near earth asteroid um until they worked out what it was and that's curbed Nick down I, I would have liked it to have burned up but I don't think I was coming in fast enough so back to the launch pad and shall we call this one a real life one I think we will and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you how to use the Kerbal alarm clock mod um I'm on the launch pad and in it, if I just lower it, so I don't have to keep clicking on the wrong part of the screen. Okay, here we go, to see it a bit better. If I click to the transfer window, what I can do is I can leave my reference point as Kerbin, because that's where I'm leaving from, but I can change my target to Eve. And what that will do is it will calculate the amount of time to the shortest burn required between the two planets. And what you can do is you can press um, Add Alarm, and... What that will do is it will take whatever time you've set it to remind you from and it will pause the game that far from either the maneuver node or the change of sphere of influence or whatever it is that you've told it to remind you about. In this case, it's going to take a certain amount of days to be the closest possible maneuver to Eve. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to speed this up because it, it took a long time in real life. Um, because as you can see at the moment, uh, Eve is in front of me. So if I was going to do a burn now, Eve would accelerate away from me by the time I got there. What you want is, if you're moving inwards towards the sun, roughly they should be behind you um, in in their orbit, so that when you get to where they are, your two planets should be roughly parallel to each other. It's the opposite if you're going outwards towards the edges of the solar system. You want the planet to be in front of you, because you're moving faster than they are. So out of the map view we're now on the launch pad we're all lined up and ready to go and yes they as you can see now that the action groups work fine so i'm just going to retract them and there we go and i'm going to launch not on this side i'm going to launch in the night so that my the, well, the, the part of the orbit that I'm on at the moment will shrink down. You, you'll see what I mean. I guess it's quite hard to explain. The the blue line that you can see going across the screen at the moment, that's the, the orbit of Kerbin around the sun. And I'm going to bring my orbit inside that. But the problem is, on the opposite side of the, the sun, it's going to be pushed out. I'm actually going to be increasing my distance there. But that shouldn't matter too much because I'm going to be doing a correction burn before I get too far around. So actually I'm using a bit more fuel, but it should be a bit quicker. Um, or so I hope. But yeah, get ready for launch. This is going to be the launch of Kerbina 1, my analog or kind of um, imitation of uh, Mariner 2. Um, Mariner 1 was launched on the same mission, but... Uh, exploded on the launch pad and they sent up Mariner 2 which is an identical vehicle to do the same job so I'm throttling up at the moment uh, going a bit faster because the overheating hasn't actually kicked in which is a bit strange I was, I was taking it quite cautiously but it seems like I, I, I didn't really need to and you can see now it's just starting to overheat a little bit and I really want to avoid that because what happens is if it overheats too much the boosters catch on fire and it doesn't matter even if you cut off your engine entirely they'll uh, keep overheating and explode so I'm trying to avoid that I'm pitching over now because um, I'm not wanting to get into an orbit I'm just wanting to punch straight out of the Kerbin system so I'm banking over quite early and also the extra speed that this vehicle's got has meant that if I started banking over at 20,000 uh, I would be in quite a, it's quite wasteful for fuel to start pushing that out sideways and 
you know, the risk is always when you pitch over that you're not going to have enough speed to to keep increasing your velocity uh, in your engines because um, when you pitch over sometimes you can lose a lot of speed in the manoeuvring of it as the aerodynamics kick in so we're at 47, 48, 49 and separate that stage now okay so from here on out I have this little fuel efficient engine on this quite big tank um, and I've just waited to get out the atmosphere to blow the fairings off and open the the solar panels and everything and I'm gonna let the autopilot take over at this bit because I'm, I'm getting a bit of um, a bit of wobble without the SAS on so yeah I'm opening the comm system and it's at this point that I realized that I'm not sure that the mission control has it itself on the ground an antenna that is going to be able to reach me when I get out of the system. Mine's going to reach back, it's going to be able to transmit data, but it wouldn't be able to receive any signals um, at the ground station. But I'm not 100% sure on that, so I think I... Well, what I'll do is I'll, I'll sort my burnout, I'll get it so that I'm leaving the system, and I might have to do a quick save and just see whether my connection will survive when I get out far enough. I'm on the dark side at the moment, but I should have enough battery life, and as well I think this engine generates power, so that shouldn't be too much of a problem. So yeah, I've got the solar panels open, but they're, they're doing absolutely nothing at the moment. But as you can see, yeah, I'm pushing my orbit out, and I think I'm probably going to have a Mooner collision, because the moon was on the horizon when I launched. Yeah, there you go. Oh, just keep... I should just, yeah, push straight through it. Not going to be a problem. And we're out beyond Minimus, and that's it. That's enough power to escape the the curve in planetary system as you can see the yellow line that's that's my projected orbit um it's actually nearer to the sun where i am now but on the opposite side it's further away so when i actually escape kerbin i'm gonna flip around and slow down and that should bring me in towards eve but yeah you'll, you'll get to see all of my playing around with maneuver nodes and everything um because that's that's the difficult bit of trying to get to other planets just because the distances are so large and the amount of thrust needed before it can push you too far you know beyond what you wanted to do um it's it's you need really finicky you need to get it exactly right and i'm aiming to get within a hundred thousand um meters kilometers i think it's meters of eve so anything below that but not uh, to burn up, because I don't think I'd be able to transmit data. Um, but yeah, I'm, I've, I've quick saved it, and I'm just watching now to see the green line between myself and Kerbin, to see if that flickers off. And it does, I'm down to no connection. Top left, you can see underneath the time, the time uh, acceleration, I'm, I have no connection which is going to be a problem because I've not even done a correction burn yet so I can't even send my vehicle there as basically dead weight um, so what am I going to do about that yeah I've reverted the flight to just after I, I managed to get to escape and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an emergency operation in the space plane hangar I'm going to create myself a longer range antenna, the same antenna I have, no, even a... You know what, there's no point doing it twice. I'm going to get the biggest antenna there is, and stick it on a little... Well, it's going to have to be a big car if I'm using the big antenna. But yeah, I'm going to make myself a car and just park it near the space center. And that should mean that whatever it is that I'm transmitting from EVE will go back to this buggy. And then this buggy will 
relay the short distance back to the actual antennas at the Kerbal mission, uh, the Kerbal Space Center. So there's some solar panels. Um, and yeah, I don't think I can stick stuff straight onto the side, so I'm using a docking adapter piece that from the um, from the Cosmos parts pack. And then I can attach the big antenna on top of that. It's an ugly bugger, but it's going to do the job. And this little antenna here will give it omnidirectional communication back to mission control, which will mean that my entire network has a route through to mission control. As long as whatever I launch uh, has a connection facing back to this vehicle, it should be controllable. Uh, it won't be a problem for things in low orbit, they can go straight back to the space center, but for anything I want to send out to Jewel or Eve, or even Juno, they need to have the connection back to this vehicle. Which at the moment is called Untitled Spacecraft. Um, uh, oh, I'm also just thinking maybe that I should add some way for Kerbals to to get up there in case I'm an, a complete idiot and I manage to roll it and need to repair the dish or something. Because on the moon or something I could just um, jet back up onto the top, but you can't do that in on Kerbin. And I also realised that it was a nighttime launch, so I'm going to need lights to see where I'm going. And yeah, just stairs so we can actually get up on top of the on top of the like the gantry part. Oh dear. So yeah, let's call it the. Yeah, I can't even remember what that stood for now. Long range. Mm. Well, yeah, if you've got any suggestions, I can't honestly remember what I meant by that, but feel free to leave what you think it could mean in the comments. So yeah, I'm setting up the connection right now to active vessel, which means that whatever vessel I'm playing at the time will have this pointing at them. This this will know to always look at the computer or player controlled vehicle. So it's running a bit slow, but that's the big engine, uh, the big wheels, I think. So where am I going to put it? Um, I don't obviously want it to be on the runway because that's going to be a problem if I'm trying to land anything on the runway. So I'm going to bring it over towards where the actual radar dishes already are. So it's like part of the radar constellation that they've got on the planet. A radio array. A constellation is an array in orbit, so it's just an array. This is an absolute slug, but at least I'll never have to use it again, hopefully. The only problem will be is trying to get... Hmm, I haven't thought about that, actually. It's going to be how to have day and night side contact. I need something on the opposite continent. But then that would have no way of connecting to the communication satellites that I'm eventually going to have. So what I may have to do is just eventually get rid of this and have a really long-range telecommunication satellite. Huh. Which is going to be a problem because I'm going to do the first communication satellite. It's quite basic. So that means that what I'm sending to EVE now is only going to have connection three hours out of every six. And good God, this is this is already quite a long video. Um, well, I've taken you through all the steps because I, you know, I thought it might be instructional. But yeah, the actual mission to Eve will continue in the next video. Remember to subscribe so you can catch that when it's uploaded. 